Um, as a uh, Māori resource manager, uh, because the Y262 claim is about, uh, about an indigenous flora and fauna and Māori intellectual property rights. And of course I knew at that time that there was a real lot of prejudice from Pākehā managers and uh, technicians around Māori getting involved in this mahi. You know, they're saying, well, you know, uh, Māori don't have a science or uh, Māori come up with um, things like tanifa and uh, that sort of thing, which they found very difficult to, to, to handle. At that time, I knew it was just racist prejudice uh, on their behalf, because, um, you know, who, who, who do you marry think you are? And so that's what, they, what had happened to it at that time, and I felt really passionate on behalf of Ngāti Wai about the Y262 claim, that this was an opportunity for Māori to state their case in a meaningful way, so that we have proper access to management and control of those uh, resources in the environment. Um, at that time too, it was kind of like a learning curve as well, is that uh, we didn't understand ourselves that uh, we hadn't put some kind of a structure into place for the six claimants to make sure that if anybody tutored around uh, with any aspect of the claim, uh, that they would have to come to that organisation. It has only been in the last four or five years that we have talked about uh, that we should have a kaitiaki uh, trust uh, to look after the claim and of course we still hadn't done it and of course no doubt that'll be something that we will be talking uh, talking about at this uh, hui up in Nahipara over the next few days. But over the years I just saw that not only we in Ngāti Wai were undermining the Y262 claim but it was happening throughout, and of course the government through Te Puni Kōkuri were promoting those sorts of um, those sorts of kaupapa, uh, that was inclined to to uh, to undermine the uh, Y262 claim and take the sting out of it, if you like. And uh, of course um, we inadvertently uh, became part of that. It was only afterwards that I realised what we had done. We had actually become part of undermining the Y262 claim. Uh, because um, our claim was uh, was based on um, endemic flora and fauna, um, as as well as our right to have access to cultural resources from birds, from 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 all animals, plants, and what have you. Was that our right to to do that? At the same time, too, I knew that we were struggling with Western paradigm in terms of what is science. Right? And of course, it was quite interesting that uh, it was during the, my research into my master's degree that I saw, uh, you know, what because I always did hear about this fellow called Francis Bacon, who science always talked about as being the grandfather of modern day science. And of course, at the same time too, um, um, he was also a, a, a fellow who used to sit with the uh, with the government government in the days of of assessing witches and uh, burning witches. And of course, when I, uh, when I read what he said, what he said was that nature must be hounded in her wanderings and put into constraint, and it was for the scientist to torture her secrets. So straight away that, for me, I just begin to lose respect straight away for this Pākehā science thing that we were struggling with to say that Mātauranga Māori was a Māori form of science. Uh, for example, uh, Krakaberry, to remove the poison from Krakaberry was that we, you know, like uh, those fellows were so arrogant that they weren't even prepared to acknowledge that what our Tupanas had learnt by removing the poison from Krakaberry was in itself a very significant science. So it's only become in the last three, four years, not even four years, uh, that I've been feeling that there is all of a sudden now a little bit of a balance between Mātauranga Māori and Western science. In fact, we have been holding conference on part of the Environmental Risk Management Authority um, uh, Tangata Whenua group, and because uh, we had our first conference at Te Papa about four years ago on tikanga and technology. And so that is, it's been through that that we've been able to find that balance uh, for Māori science and Pākehā science. And of course, uh, the, it goes something like this. For Māori, uh, everything physical must be balanced by that spirit, spiritual uh, element of the Māori world. 
from a Māori world view. And so therefore te ao wairua uh, must always be, become part of our decision-making process. Whereas for Pākehā science, uh, there is no, no wairua, it is just cold, hard, still. And because after reading that uh, quoted of Francis Bacon's, I realised all of a sudden how come Pākehā had been able to make such significant um, advances, if you want to call it that, in terms of technology, in terms of, of environmental sciences. And of course uh, the arrogance of what Francis Bacon said, uh, to me, meant that that's how Pākehā science had done what they had done. Is that they don't knock on the door, they don't ask, they just kick the door down. And so that was that to me was the balance that we talk about now in our huis. We've had two conferences so far on tikanga and technology. Our second one was actually held down in Fakatani last year, and that was uh, one of the uh, one of the significant uh, kopapa down there from Tangata Finua that was presented at that conference was with a group that uh, Joe Harawira is leading down there uh, called SWAP, which stands for Sawmill Workers Against Poison. Um, and that's uh, something that our people are, uh, are becoming aware of now, is that for a very long time in our sawmills and that, is that there has been a lot of PCB poisons and that, which is very, very heavy poison. And so balancing what Joe and them were doing with sawmill workers uh, against poisons with for example, the Vietnam vets uh, who were sprayed all over with uh, Agent Orange, uh, we found a balance in there. And so at the same time too, it was an opportunity down there in Whakatane for us to talk to Māori matakiti, not only Māori, but spiritualists, and to talk to them about this mamai of Papatūnuku. And of course that is where the uh, matakite uh, were saying that when Papatūnuku wants to clean herself up, is in the Ngahiri, is that she uses mushrooms and fungus uh, to do that. And so uh, that gave us something to, gave us a little bit of a lead. And of course, fortunately at that time, Tariana Turia, um, she supported that whole kapa, kaupapa, and including Parikuru Horomia. And of course, uh, we eventually got some funding and some, science, uh, some scientific, Pākehā scientific support. Uh, to look at some kind of remediation to take that poison out of that soil.